For those who are new to the channel, I share videos and tutorials here on YouTube and you can find free high resolution photo references on my Patreon site. If you like what I do and you want to support me, you can show your love over at Patreon. Hey guys, I'm Inis Wang and in today's video, I'm going to share with you a walkthrough on how I painted Pan, Heaven and Hearth. It's been a while since I posted something kind of tutorial-ish on my paintings, so I finally got around to one. Sorry I haven't posted anything recently. I was super busy for the month of December, like smack busy. And I just took a week's leave uh, away from work and art just to let me recuperate. And now uh, the break is finally over. I'm kind of sad, but you know, back to reality. And I appreciate your patience. If you haven't already, you can join my Discord server where I am trying to create a wholesome community and you can also get updates especially when I go live on Twitch. Both links down below in the video description. I post videos, tutorials, and photo references for free for artists to use. So if you'd like to support me and make all of this sustainable, I would greatly appreciate it if you can pledge over at Patreon. Link is also down below in the video description. I especially love to thank my fellow patrons over at Patreon for making all of this easier and possible. And that's all for today. I will proceed with the walkthrough. Hope you guys enjoy. Bye! I wanted to start by sketching out the idea. I don't have much experience with landscape, particularly a background, and so I thought to use a perspective tool to help make the landscape look at least a little bit more accurate. I made the perspective tool um, using lines uh, to combine them and then I made it into a custom shape and then arranged it to fit in a two-point perspective and just kind of move that around until I feel it seems quite accurate to what it is I want to achieve. So my friend gave me the description of his D&D character and his character is a snow leopard. He worked as a baker for a while in the city he's in. He's currently a shadow monk and a twilight carrick. <laughs> I wanted to start by sketching out the idea. I don't have much experience with landscape. And so I thought to use a perspective tool to help make the landscape look at least a little bit more accurate. I actually combine lines to make it look more like how a perspective would look. And then I turned it into a custom shape so whenever I need it, I can just bring it out, combine it, and then arrange it however I want. In this case, I decided to start off simple, a two-point perspective. And I just kind of turn it around until I feel like it does meet what I need. So I made this painting for a friend. He plays D&D and he gave me the description of his D&D character. He worked as a baker for a while in the city he's in. He's currently a shadow monk and a twilight cleric and has an affinity. Personality-wise, he's honestly like an old-school kung fu samurai character. He speaks politely and casually and is fairly calm and collected. He's also pretty light-hearted and likes to make jokes, though he does so with a smirk and a light chuckle than raucous laughter. A bit of a Robin Hood type. And since his character is a snow leopard who is a monk and lives in the mountains, it's hard not to think about the prayer flags in the Himalayan mountains. It's so fitting as snow leopards are also meant to live there. So I just combined all and since he used to be a baker, I was thinking of him having maybe a stone oven. I decided to start sketching out the piles of rocks they usually combine and arrange for the prayer flags and I thought he could rest there. The stone oven only came in later on so for now I just decided I would paint him up high in the mountains probably having like a very spiritual retreat kind of thing that high up 
and the background will have mountains and a very cloudy atmosphere. I am fairly comfortable with animals. Humans are slowly improving, however, I'm not exactly there yet. So it was very nice to... It's quite interesting to actually mix human anatomy with animal anatomy. How for animals, their snout tends to jet out more. And you have to compensate with the human structure or else it can look a little too imbalanced. So I had quite an... It took me quite a while to actually try and figure out how to combine both animal and human together. I really like the personality given by my friend. It made me feel like he's a very lighthearted, a very happy-go-lucky kind of person and so I wanted to give him like a very gentle smile, kind eyes and just... I didn't quite know what I wanted to do for him yet. I was thinking that I could make him appreciate the sunrise while admiring his weapons. So I just kind of drew his head turned back and his body facing another side. Like he was perhaps cleaning his weapon and then he was so engrossed in it. And then, oh, next thing you know, the sunrise is up. Oh, how wonderful. What a beautiful day. <laughs> so that was my thought process when I decided to sketch this. Of course, um, I don't really draw, I don't really freehand cats a lot, so it took me a while to try and get the shape of the head right. I tend to draw the snout a lot longer than necessary because cats have a very short snout compared to dogs, so I had a lot of trial and error in the sketching process. For my animal-human hybrid, I tend to make the body look a little bit more human. The only things that I would normally change are the hands and legs. I would tend to give, like for this one because it's a clouded leopard, I would make the hands I guess a little bit fluffier, uh, but more or less it's still quite close to human hands. But for the legs, I like to make it look a little bit more animalistic because the feet of an animal is much longer than a human's. So I like to have that hind leg look when it comes to my animal-human hybrids. I sketch I do tend to clean the outlines a little I don't quite like to draw an outline over the sketch I just like to use the sketch lines itself I am quite a lazy artist I have to admit that so that's usually my work process and then I would paint over the outlines as I go along so it won't look as messy it won't look super sketched up as it initially was.
clouded leopards are very known for their very long and super fluffy tail. So I have to remember to have to add that in at 100% have to be included because they're so fluffy. As for the clothes, I always like to draw the body underneath before I add in all the clothes. It also kind of gives an understanding how the body is laid underneath. Then you can see how the cloth will fold according to how the, pod the body is positioned. Of course, uh, personally, I still don't have that much experience with clothing, but uh, I did try my best. I, for this character, he is a monk, so his uh, type of clothes are very minimalistic and very simple. So it's kind of just like a cloth robe and some long pants, that's about it. He's a very humble character in that sense, and so I just try to make it simple as possible. The definite upside to digital painting is definitely the flexibility it provides. You can make certain layers invisible as you can focus on other things such as the subject as I am doing now. And you can make the background visible again so you can see how everything interacts. If my subject is too big, I can always make it smaller. If my subject is too small, I can always make it bigger. Vice versa, you can move your subjects or the background. and. It's just so much flexibility involved that it's, it's fun to experiment with. It's not something, you can always click the undo button, it's something that you can always have fun with and you can always bring it back if you make a mistake. Okay, so now we are gonna paint this I'm just going to rename our layers. And I'm going to repaint this slowly. I was thinking of doing something kind of like the mountains of Nepal the my I'm doing this for a friend and it's his character is a snow leopard and lives in the mountains he's the monk I quite like that story so I kind of feel like it's kind of fitting because it is actually a uh, mountain lep mountain leopards. Uh, snow leopards can be found in the mountains of Tibet, and I thought it was uh, quite fitting to have it there. With you know, if you ever go to Nepal or Tibet, you can actually see their mountains have like prayer flags and stuff. So I thought that was, I thought that would probably make a good fit. So I'm trying to draw like some mountains in the background. I'm gonna 
gonna do like some paint. Just kind of use a very typical brush, like just a standard brush. And then I'm just gonna smudge it. hiked up the, the mountains of Nepal once. I went to uh, Annapurna and it was a really wonderful experience. Spiritual almost, I feel. like It was really nice to connect with nature again. That feeling, you know. I'm trying to look for my Cloud texture, there you go. I don't know where it is on my... My, uh... My, sorry, my brush library, so I'm just gonna manually do it will give it a little bit of texture yeah I went to uh, the base camp of Annapurna and it's really beautiful and the people there are so friendly there it was a really nice experience I wish I could do it again but it is far and yeah Okay, let's see how it looks like if we smudge it. I think smudging does give it a, like a quite a nice effect, kind of almost wispy. I think that's nice. I think we'll just leave it at that first okay. Next we are going to do the background. So um, here. Just do a quick quick uh, color foundation here. I always like to go with solid colors. You know what, I'm going to try something, uh, a trick. Oops, not this. Clipping mask. And black and white. I think this will be nice to just kind of understand what we're dealing with for a bit. Instead of focusing on the colors, we're just gonna like look at it from a contrast point of view. Wait, no, okay, wait, hang on. Hang on just brown. And next. It's also nice that we have the navigator on the top right corner that will help to... It's like the equivalent of just walking uh, at the other end of the room and just 
seeing your painting with a fresh pair of eyes. The sun is coming up. Actually, you know what? On second thought, I mean, it's too dark. them just to avoid confusion I used to be like if you look through my older videos I hardly ever ever um, name my layers or you know put them in a very organized manner <laughs> uh, you know I I, I, I grew up I grew up It'll be nice to just show like the scenery. He gonna, I was thinking maybe he was holding a dagger. I still haven't figured it out. That's a I'm used a custom shape. Ooh. 
Diana. Okay, looking. It's quite consistent with the. Yeah. Okay. I'm looking at the color. The where the light would shine. Okay. Probably take a little bit of black, making it a little bit dark in certain areas. Oof. Okay, um, going to try something. So that we're gonna make a layer underneath. And we're gonna paint it white because of the snowy mountains. Do like quick sketchings. All right, now we'll merge them. I do not want it to look. I don't want to risk having it look very. looking very you know. uh photo realistic so I'm trying to brush it down
I think I, should, I think this is good. Did enough. Yeah, duplicate just in case. And blur. Caution. I like. I think in terms of radius. I do want a little bit of texture peeking out. So I get this one. So I go down the bottom. It's not too bad. I quite like it. Okay. Mounted. Uh, what else? Clouds. Hmm. Uh, let's duplicate that. And go in front. Oh no, no, no. Uh, on top of the mountain layer. Ooh, that looks pretty good actually. Um, makes this a little darker shade and all. Opacity, bring it down. Okay, we'll take a masking layer. Okay, it's quite nice to see some of the clouds peer through. Um, maybe some. Oops. Oh no, wait, shoot. No, it's not eraser. Oops. Okay, so basically, how this works is you get the masking layer, which is this part in here. So, what happens? And it's kind of like a cheat, right? Because you don't want to erase it. I'm gonna, so we're going to uh, click on this um, frame here. If you're going to go, like, if you can see the color we have here is black, means we're going to erase it. But, like, for example, we're going to erase it. But let's say, you know, if you erase it, it's going to be permanent. So what we're going to do is, let's say you don't want it to be permanent in case you change your mind in the future. You just change the color to white and you can actually bring it back. So that is the beauty of it. I do love it so, so much. So let's uh, redo that. Okay, we go back to black. I want this to be, yeah, a little, I don't want it to be too much. This one don't want any clouds at all in this area here. Okay, here probably same thing. Something like that. I do like how the background is looking. I mean, the mountain range. I'm curious if you bring it lower. It 
It looks further if you put it lower. Never mind. We'll play with it later. I'll bring it lower. Okay. I don't want it to compete too much with the mountain range. nice like triangle here so you could go like that you know that's kind of like what I think I'm going for Outline, I think. Bring it up a little bit. Make it a little darker first. Okay. Let's go with this. Um, wait, okay, never mind. We'll make it a little darker. Oops. Gonna put the opacity up. So I don't want the rock to look too flat, it'll look very man made. Maybe, I don't know. Perhaps chalk is better. I'll just do like a very like a hard brush but kind of create texture not texture but kind of like the um, like uh, impressions of like rocks stacking on each other
kind of looks like rocks stacking on each other right now. impressions at some cracking rocks sure what chalk will give me. Just gotta experiment with it. doing like just texture brushes to kind of speed up the process a little
Okay, I'm going to lock the transparent pixels. Set my thing on overlay, my brush mode. I just kind of add in some colors to reflect the colors of the sky. Multiply. Yes. Next, I like to show you guys and splash. Uh, let's go with rock texture. I guess we'll just take this something like that. Copy. Then we do this wonderful thing called create clipping mask. Let's 
see we adjust the color. So, uh, I don't know much about prayer flags, only that, um, I know I've seen them in the distance. Usually are found in the uh, Tibetan mountains or Himalayans. I, I know they're very colorful. And, uh, I'm just gonna do them. I don't think there's in any particular order. I'm just kind of like googling here. Uh, I guess not. Okay, we'll just. I think we can. We can do them in order. So we'll go with green, red. Uh, let's see. Uh, 
white. Maybe I'll put this like. Oh, maybe darker a little. Okay, after white, it'll be blue. We'll kind of to put dark blue, but like not so saturated. After blue, we'll go with yellow. Same thing, I don't want it too vibrant or saturated, so I'm bringing it closer to the gray area. Okay, after yellow. Oh, we're back to green. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna go in this order. So we'll just keep doing this with other flags as well. So I guess these are the only colors uh, that prayer flags come in the form of, I think. So let's uh, do the rest here. Pick another preset brush. Oh, we're gonna merge this too. And lock the transparent pixels. So, um, you know what? I feel like the flags should be a little darker. I like to put it really dark, especially if there is m the more contrast it has, I think it'll be better. So, we are going to do this, zoom in, and uh, I like to keep the opacity quite low, but then uh, for this part, I made my brush a little less sensitive, so I'm just gonna just kind of paint where I think it would go. So I'm just kind of doing it however I feel. I'm not very well versed with cloth as well, so <laughs> this is all very new.
can go back to Kula. Oh, I'm gonna sneeze, gonna sneeze. Hey. Hey. <coughs> ah, excuse me. So I would probably go over it with uh, some form of color dodge. I have to do this for every every flag. I guess I should zoom out. If I zoom out, it's like I won't get too bogged down with the details because I get really like kind of <laughs> uh, too preoccupied with how it would look. And I set so much time and worry on it, so I, I guess I shouldn't. So let's just put like a few strokes, you know. And put a little bit. Okay, the further it goes, I don't think we have to worry too much about it. Okay, I think it's looking pretty good. Pretty good. As good as can be. I'm gonna click a color dodge brush. That's good. Okay, put this behind the rocks. Oh, wait. <laughs> okay, wait. All right, now I think it doesn't make a difference. All right, so uh, that's pretty good. I'm gonna go back to the leopard and just. Oops, not this. Just put that on the underline here. I kind of made the body a bit bigger, so that's why the color is out of the outline. Okay. 
Alright. And then I'm going to lock the pixels here. And... I'll combine it with the outline. Yeah, I quite like the opacity of the outline. Putting down, like blocking in the colors. Whoa. So before I start painting the fur, I'm just going to paint in a very general idea of how the light will hit the cat. And so I use the app uh, Art Pose to help with the idea of how the light will hit the subject. And by doing this, it kind of makes my job a little easier. So it's building the foundation of flat colors and then just kind of roughly block in how the light will hit the subject then only I will start by adding the fur just to give it texture so that's usually how my workflow goes it definitely helps by simplifying it instead of thinking so far ahead that putting these into steps makes it a lot more that it makes it a lot easier to swallow and I don't get easily overwhelmed by the complexity of it all. I quite like to do the eyes first, so we'll just do the eyes first. It's quite nice because they have kind of like a like a nice green bluish kind of eyes going on. Uh, okay, we'll go. Not so saturated. So maybe go somewhere like that. like to make him look a little bit like a like a very soft like a kind kind of looking snow leopard so from the uh, description that was given by my friend he's like a very nice gentleman and I quite like that it's very cute 
so kind of like a blue, greenish, maybe, maybe like a greenish thing going on. I don't generally mix the eye color, although a friend did uh, mention I should do, like, not mention, but like she suggested, and I thought it was interesting because it's generally not what I do. So, um, let's give it a try. And just making him look over like the distance, like the sun. Sun. Sunrise? I think uh, I like to do the eyes first because I feel like it has very like so much impact. Do like a little bit of bump. to blend it so usually for eyes I like to divide them into two the top half will be dark top half will be dark bottom one will be light and then in you have like the highlights here so that's my usual go-to formula for eyes never never cease to fail <laughs> lines are a little blurry so I'm going to leave that little crisp of the eyes, I think we'll just carry on putting it here first. Just giving it like that. know what I actually want to do. It's kind of weird. Um, Cause trying to combine the anatomical structure of an animal to human facial features is kind of tricky for sure. trying my best to try and understand okay I'm trying to like add in the human uh, planes of the head but also trying to keep in mind the pattern of the animal
Okay, for this one, I'm going to unlock the transparent pixels because I do want to create the, the eye from the other side. my brush okay and he's looking really adorable <laughs> Quite like just adding eyes, just just that alone gives me so much pleasure. <laughs> okay, for this part, I do want him to be all nice and fluffy, so I'm gonna pick my feather brush here. But I like it's kind of like a fluffy kind. Give him some fur. maybe make it a little bit rounder yeah, I guess the bottom chin tends to kind of protrude out of fluffiness <laughs> I'm, I'm just looking at reference photos of snow leopards faces can't say I'm having a accurate term. I'm doing my best here, guys. He does have like a beard, it's kind of cozy. definitely am going to do something about the rock. I mean, you can definitely tell that the rock, the leopard is competing too much with the rock. I, I see that, but for now, I'm just going to focus on the leopard first before we start tweaking the lighting and everything. Thank you. 
for okay the rock is definitely way too distracting uh, I'm gonna go with lightness and just bring down the li uh, the lightness okay I guess by minus 10 percent we can make the snow leopard a little hmm a little brighter later I am kind of worried my leopard can probably start looking like a dog with his snout being a little too uh, long Snout is probably way too long. Okay, so I'm bringing this a little bit. I don't actually do much cats so in, I mean like in this kind of profile well actually I don't really do much cats actually <laughs> um, yeah uh, cats can get me pretty I don't know their facial structure is weird they're <laughs> kind of flat like a lot <laughs> that's a better improvement yeah yeah I think that does look better actually Yeah, this one is definitely a more 3D profile, much better. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yay, I love it when we made a breakthrough, guys. <laughs> it kind of adds up. I was doing like the snout like a little bit too long, I think. And also like the profile of the cat was, uh, it needed to be more three quarters but I was making it a little bit too side so man that is such like I'm I'm quite I'm quite uh very 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 
proud of myself. I think that was really good. It looks much like a cat now. <laughs> I was kind of worried. It did not look like a cat. It sort of did not look like a cat. Okay. So his head looks so nice and puffy now and his body just looks kind of weirdly nothing <laughs> weirdly naked okay we'll go back to our fluffy um, let's see da, 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 our fluffy fluffy uh brush okay I quite like it. He's like a very thick neck, very masculine. I like it so far. Like, like, like. It. I guess it is kind of weird. <laughs> I'm just kind of like, um, giving my piece a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, praises. <laughs> I think that's nothing wrong with that. You should, you should be happy with what you have created. And I'm quite happy that now our cat looks like a cat. Okay. Ooh, I do love, I love how fluffy it is. I, w I, I gotta admit guys, I was very, very certain I would not get the texture or it won't even turn out nice i think i thought the cat might be a little too not good i'm glad how it turned out it turned out fine not too bad not too bad i thought Now, we are going to have him have clothes, so, okay, we are going to... So, I do, <clears throat> uh, even though they have clothes, like, okay, for, like, this one is going to be a little bit skin tight. Not skin tight, uh, a little bit skin reveal, and then I would, uh... Um, shade the body as well, so it's like, you know, I don't have to worry too much if, like, a little bit of cloth... Uh, reviews that area, you're like, okay. Uh, you know, it's like a little peek through that you know you painted there, so it's kind of safe. Ooh, I quite like that. So here is slightly in the shadows, so not going to uh, do that area a little too bright. So we're just going to stay away from there a little bit. this brush okay so I am so okay I'll tell you guys what my process is right now my process is I'm using a 3D app for a human reference, and I'm also looking at uh, snow leopards. 
as reference photo but most of the lighting reference so i'm not very good at lighting okay i'm gonna be real with you lighting is super tricky always has been always will be for me so i'm using a 3d app to and you know, let it sort itself out so i kind of um did like where i want the lighting to roughly be at and then I am just trying to follow it as closely as possible. Let me... I feel like his head uh, should be back a bit more, I think. Or, no, smaller. <laughs> um, I feel like his arms are kind of small. I don't know, wait, let me look back. His arms does look a little small, but you know what? We're just gonna continue um, painting because I realized that it does it start it does get a little bigger as soon as I put in the fur because it looks puffier. So we're just gonna keep at it guys, keep at it. It's kinda hard to just trust yourself in an area you're not confident in at all. So for this part, I usually don't, well, uh, I don't lock the transparent pixels because I do want the fur to protrude out of my sketch because then uh, it will look puffier. And it's going quite swimmingly, I would say. of the spots yet. I am actually quite happy with how it's turning out. I don't know. <laughs> I say that I'm happy now. I am I am happy given the current situation, although I'm pretty sure if I look back three months or maybe five months down the road, I'll be like, oh god, I can't believe I was happy with this. Like seriously, it doesn't look that great. <laughs>
I think it's time to put down the spots. Mm, I'm just curious though, I'm gonna take a, a burnt tool and just kind of create a little bit more dramatic lighting. Maybe that's a bit that much. Too bad, I think it's a little bit more dramatic. tattoos actually
guess now we can do spots all over. Um, let's see, we have to look at the design of the spots, because if you look at certain spots, it's not just like polka dot, polka dot. Um, snow leopards, their pattern of their spots is much a little bit like clouded leopards. Like it's not, it has like a sort of an outline of uh, spots. Just to 
give it more texture. overboard with the um I realize he uh, he got pants here so it's all gonna be colored up no you can't show good workmanship <laughs> a masking layer again I quite I love masking layers because I click on this little white box over here and I can delete by using dark black paint so I know where to begin actually so I can just like delete where I want but I can always bring it back so that's the coolest part I am gonna use the pattern so it oh wait so it still look like fur texture transparent pixels. I'm going to go with a cloth. Mm, this is the hardest part because cloth is so not my expertise. But let's just try. It's 
Let's go and multiply. versed with um, the dynamics of a cloth. I find them quite difficult because they're they're very fluid in in terms of their mo their movement, the way they fold. I don't know if I want to do it very clothy or more like a leathery texture. Hmm. I do suppose. I'm starting to wonder, maybe you don't really require... So, remember when I said I was lazy? <laughs> um, yeah, so what I like about digital art is like sometimes you just gotta work smart, not hard. 
So I took the big slab of rock there and duplicated it. And I didn't want it to look so much like a duplicate, so I kind of edited it. I erased some rocks and kind of make sure that the size of the rocks are still the same, but I erased some of the layers off, so it does look a little shorter as well. And before this, I really wanted the character to bake bread to make it a little bit more authentic to his backstory. So I googled stone oven, some the ovens that people can create when they are in the forest. And it was quite interesting how it looks. So it has two compartments. Well, basically it's made out of entirely of rock and there is an opening. Uh, in the middle and it's divided by a large slab of rock the fire will be at the bottom while the top will be where the bun will be so it, it really is an oven it's the fire comes from below so it still doesn't burn the bread and it was very interesting when I did that research because that's what I wanted to do so in the bottom I use a pattern brush and just kind of give it like sparks of fire that's going on while at the top I'm going to color the bread. So I just use 100% uh, opacity and flow and then just paint it, uh, paint the entire thing brown and then just shade it with a little bit of texture and I wanted to make it look like bread like the first time you see it you know every time when you see those icons of bread it has like those tree stripes thing going on because the baker would usually like slice those to make his mark and also for the bread to rise so yeah I just kind of make it look a little bit iconic so you know right off the bat that's a bread that's a nice loaf there <laughs> and I made uh, smoke coming out because you know make it a little bit more realistic in that aspect and it is I think it'll be a nice touch for the painting all this little little things that kind of adds to the story people may not notice or appreciate but somehow in the back of their mind they it makes sense if you know what i mean for my favorite part that i usually do towards the end of the painting is the lighting so whenever there's a source of light i do like to accomplish that by also painting how the light will reflect onto other surfaces so for example the fire was the source of the light and then I would paint all these little little streaks of red and yellow to represent the light coming from the fire that is bouncing off the rocks. You can see not only the rock of the oven will catch the light but also the ground and even the subject itself and it's kind of it adds to the 3d effect because that's how you know subjects work you know they absorb the light around them and it helps give that 3d roundness to the subject or the background it kind of gives it a little bit more life And it's also nice, I quite like to have this rim light or back lighting because it adds drama and also the fact that it kind of separates the subject from the background. So if I give it a rim light, it kind of outlines the subject without looking too cartoony. It kind of gives it a very good reason to outline the subject away from the background. So by having a source of backlight, I usually like to give it a sort of a outline but it has to be, well, the fire is small, so it has to be subtle. If it's too bright, then it doesn't really make much sense. So there's a lot of thinking and balancing involved. In his description, he also mentioned that he has a staff as well as a bow. He also had a really nice dagger. In the beginning, I wanted the dagger to be in his hands, but I decided to go with the staff and bow first. He'll lay it on his uh, rock and just let it rest there. I wanted it to be something simple. I didn't want it to be too flashy. So I just took, I was thinking like maybe a long stick with some gold engravings. So that's about it, something simple. And 
the same thing for the bow as well. I wanted it to be a long bow as well as the same concept as the stick, something simple with gold engravings. a little bit more of that background. I didn't just want to use straight lines, I wanted it to be consistent with the texture of the subject, in this case fur, so I wanted to have that outline to have a little bit of that fur texture as opposed to the outlines of the cloth, you can see those are straight lines. So I wanted to make that tiny difference for some added effect. For the last piece, I decided to go with a baguette <laughs> than a dagger. I felt that it was, I think it was a nice touch, him making bread in the mountains. And I guess I am a foodie person, so I, I much like bread than dagger. So I added a nice baguette in his hands, just appreciating his craftsmanship. I use the levels to play with the lighting and I quite like that so you don't always have to manually paint the lighting you can just have a quick edit in that sense and of course the baguette does look a little bright so I reduce the lightness on that and I also use the masking uh, layer so I can always bring it back and erase it whenever I want whenever it it's easier especially if you have subjects intertwined with it so that makes it a lot easier to make sure that the bread is still visible and I just wanted the top of it to be bright a little bit of a dramatic lighting as well as like a sunset a sunrise effect half the bread is lit <laughs> so I put the black and white filter on so I can see how nice the contrast is. It's nice to see the contrast, what works, what doesn't, like is the background competing for light uh, as well as the foreground because you don't want that to happen. 